Thank you, Davika. Uh, my name is David Soybert from the University of California, Santa Barbara, and I'm here with my collaborators today, Sean Everkamp from AVP uh, in Brooklyn, New York, and Michael Lashutka of Properly Sorted Database Solutions in Beacon, New York. Um, this project began a couple of years ago when we received funding from the Library of Congress to do a linked data project related to the discography of American historical recordings. Uh, for those of you that might be unfamiliar with DAR, I won't read all the text of the slides, but you can refer to it later. Um, DAR is a, a discography, which is a bibliography of sound recordings. Uh, it documents nine American record labels between 1894 and 1950. About 325,000 uh, master recordings are documented in the database. Uh, the project is based at the University of California, Santa Barbara since 2005, although the project dates back to the mid-1960s and was founded by collectors. Um, in addition, in partnership with the U.S. Library of Congress, uh, we've started adding digital content to the database, and now there's 45,000 digital audio files that can be streamed from uh, the discography online. And there's the, uh, the web interface of the database. Um, so a little overview of the linked data project. Um, what we were, the goals of the project were, came from the addition of the digital audio to the file. Uh, a discography is a rather specialized research tool, but when you add audio to it, it becomes a much more broad-based tool that has appeal to uh, researchers at, at different levels, you know, uh, K through 12, casual listeners and things like that. And we really wanted to make it more of an audio encyclopedia rather than just a discography. Um, we have uh, what we call talent records in the database. Um, these are the names, whether corporate or personal. Um, there's about 60,000 unique names in the database. Um, and over the years in editing it, we had uh, added uh, Library of Congress name authority file records to 20,000 that had matches uh, between the two databases. So we had done this work ongoing over the past 15 years. Um, our database was set up with a structure that, so that each role that a person had in the database, whether a performer, a composer, things like that, had a separate uh, talent record, as we call them, uh, which proved to be a problem when we were implementing linked data, so that had to be solved. Um, and as the, um, um, the LCNEF records were uh, important links to other data sets uh, on the web, and we wanted to take advantage of that. So the initial project scope was to extra extract uh, the LCNAF record numbers from DAR and hand those over to our consultants, AVP, and then they would harvest these from various uh, data sets, which uh, Sean will talk about. Um, and we wanted to find these links between our database and other databases. And Sean, I'm going to hand this over to you. Great. Thanks. If I, uh could get the control of the slides, that would be great. Thank you. So yeah, as David mentioned, um, we did some data, data harvesting. And first, I want to give a shout out to Matt Miller and his colleagues at Library of Congress. Um, Matt Miller just presented in the previous session talking about introducing Wikidata into to LC records. And without that work, we couldn't have done this project. So big thanks to Library of Congress and Matt for that work. Um, so we started out um, with uh, for that 47,000 um, talent records, which turned out to be about 21,000 unique artists. And we used a Python script um, to take those uh, name authority IDs and query the Library of Congress link data service. From there, we were, we were able to get um, Wikidata IDs for many of these, about 13,000. And we uh, queried Wikidata to get some more information. Um, we also queried the Wikidata API to get images and abstracts. And then we queried Music Brains, um, another database um, and discography of artists um, that is community, community populated uh, to get even more uh, properties for each of these artists. So just to show you what we collected from each, um, from LC, uh, we collected some basics, you know, name, um, birth date, the notes, the sources, and a bunch of IDs, pretty much everything that they were sharing there. Um, the sources, um, 
we didn't show on the site, but it was useful later, um, which I'll talk about in a minute, um, for vetting uh, some of uh, our other matches. Uh, from there, we went to Wikidata, collected even more properties. We got occupation, work period, start and end, instrument, um, a bunch more IDs, including Spotify, iTunes, so that we could provide links um, to audio where available. Um, and also the link back to, to um, LC uh, just to, to verify what we'd done. And we also uh, went to Wikipedia if there was an English language Wikipedia page. Uh, we got the images and any description to uh, put on the DAR site. And if there was a Music Brains identifier in the Wikidata record, we then went to Music Brains and retrieved a lot more information there. Um, so a lot of this is duplicative. Here you can see we've got birth date and death date for all of these sources, but it's useful to have um, that to verify against each other. Um, just should we need to, to check our work. So I'm going to show a few stats here. I thought that would be interesting. And after seeing Matt's slides, I think it might be interesting to compare this narrow domain of uh, musical re uh, recording artists against that broader landscape of name identifiers. Uh, but here we have Library of Congress. So we had 21,000 identifiers. And you can see we got birth and death dates for about 7,500 of those. Uh, Wikidata is a little more interesting here. We had 13,000 um, Wikidata IDs we were able to follow. Um, we found that, you know, birth and death were uh, quite a bit more populated here. Um, interesting, uh, we also had Spotify and iTunes IDs, which is really hoping to get a lot of these, but not quite so populated yet in Wikidata. And then, um, Finally, music brains here, just some stats here. Interesting to see here that um, not so many LC IDs populated in the music brains uh, records yet. So that seems like possibly an area, area for linking. So this leads me to our second strategy that we used. So for every uh, artist in DAR that did not have an LC record, we, uh, decided to query the Music Brains artist endpoint by name um, to see what we could find. And we could also do this with um, the Library of Congress. Um, they do have an endpoint to query by name, but we figured because uh, Music Brains is limited to musicians um, that we would get smaller result sets um, and that might make this human vetting and verification process a little easier. So here we queried the Music Brains um, service by artist, got a result set, and for each of those results, we went through that same process of um, following um, LC IDs to the uh, linked data service there. If there's a Wikidata ID, we followed that to the Wikidata query service, and then used that same Python code um, for the, the other query to get all of this information. And from here, Michael is going to uh, take you along the, the next steps of what we, um, what they did with all of that data. So I'll pass it over to Michael. Hello, Michael. Michael, we can't hear you if you're talking. No. Make sure your mic is unmuted, Michael.
Sorry about that, folks. While Michael troubleshoots, I'll uh, walk through the technical overview as best I can. Um, sure, thank you, David. So our, 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 our back end that our editors use is in FileMaker, and Michael is our FileMaker developer. Um, and we use um, FileMaker principally because it's a, it's a relatively agile platform for creating custom tools. Um, as Sean alluded to in her portion of the presentation, uh, there was a lot of reconciliation that had to happen after the harvested after the data was harvested. Uh, for example, those we had five or six thousand matches between Music Brains and our database that potentially had uh, links to Library of Congress uh, data, uh, but all of this had to be manually reconciled. Uh, and uh, so Michael built tools to, to perform those um, uh, reconciliations. Um, FileMaker is a low-code environment, uh, meaning that there's kind of a, a presentation layer on top of uh, the data, data structure layer. So you don't have to be, our editors don't have to be uh, uh, fluent in, in databases in order to, to uh, leverage those tools. Um, so Michael created a tool uh, to merge all of the, the individual talent records into a master talent record. And this is really where the, the title of the presentation comes from about changing the, the tires while we're driving the car. Um, we, we never stopped. Michael, are you there? Um, we never stopped editing the database while we were doing this whole um, uh, architecture change under the hood. Um, and that was uh, required a lot of uh, juggling uh, as we went forward. Um, so we did a series of automated and manual um, matches and mergers between the talent to collapse that table down into a master talent data that had one uh, identifier attached. Um, and then we sent that data out to, to Sean, who did a second harvest again uh, for a... Um, um, Sorry to interrupt. Uh, Michael, we are having noise from your microphone. I think we keep it mute. And David is doing the presentation. Thank you. Um, and okay, so here's here's our uh, um, where we the tool that Michael built to verify those um, the uh, music brains records that AVP had harvested. Um, and there's a second where you can see the metadata that had been harvested underneath. And this allowed us to to the link. Uh, the AVP record to, uh, to our record. And having it in FileMaker, which is a client server environment, also allowed us to have multiple editors at UCSB uh, working on this simultaneously and kind of chip away at it over time. Uh, here's the master, master talent merge tool, which then compared um, um, talents and then it gave the editor an opportunity in case here, here we have two Benny Carter uh, records, one as a composer and one as an instrumentalist, and it allowed the editor to say, yeah, that's the same person, and then go ahead and merge them. And so there we have the merge uh, button built into the system. And this allowed then the editor to just do a confirmation check and say, yes, go ahead and merge. And so this is what our final final master talent record looks like on the back end. And you can see that Benny Carter um, and all the different roles he has as a saxophonist, arranger, songwriter, director, things like that. And then overnight, uh, the FileMaker database pushes out to our, our MySQL uh, web platform. Um, and so we go live uh, with new data nightly. And here on our master talent page on the web, you can see now it's populated with our new DAR persistent identifier, as well as the linked uh, data um, sources that people can see who this person is and, and verify that, okay, this is the same as the person in Wikidata, same as a VOF person, et cetera. Uh, so challenges, uh, there were a number of them, as I said, we were sort of um, doing all of this work, re-architecting the backend database and the web database while we were continuing to edit data. Um, Sean completed the initial harvest in February 2020, 
Um, and then just as we were starting this, we went into lockdown in the United States um, and all of my staff began wor working remotely. Um, fortunately, we already had the tools in, pay in place to, for everybody to work remotely. So it was a pretty seamless transition. Uh, but it did mean that we had people in the library here at UCSB who were uh, normally doing public service work or working with physical collections. And we did trans, uh, people uh, moved over to working on this project uh, because they were unable to do their other, other work. Um, here's a few stats, I won't read through them all, um, but I think it was a very successful project in that we did match up um, uh, thousands of records to the various uh, data sets that Sean crawled um, and really give positive identification to the people in our database and link them to uh, other data. Um, there's a few missing things. Um, we don't have an outward facing API, um, and that would be something we'd like to do. We'd also like to do kind of real-time uh, query of Wikipedia Wikidata so we get the most up-to-date um, biographical information. For example, it's just a manual harvest process now. Um, I mean, we can, Sean could re-harvest tomorrow and Michael could just drop it in the database because we have those linkages, but nonetheless, it's not automated. Um, and we add about 300 names a month to the database, and we don't have real-time harvesting yet, and that's something we would think about doing. Um, and we'd like to add our artist ID. Um, we did add it to, Sean added it to Wikidata. Um, there was a, a tool already built to do that. And you can see that we have a, a DAR artist ID in Wikidata. Um, and now that's populated with about 9,000, or Wikidata is populated with about 9,000 of our artist IDs. Um, but as, as, as I think people probably realize with linked data, it's, it's a lot easier to get data out than it is to get data in. Um, and we would like to get our data in. And you know we have these linkages now between all these data sets and we could hand that data off to other uh, people like Discogs. We could give Discogs all of the LC uh, numbers that match in their database, which they don't presently have for everything, or music brains, for example. Um, but that requires coordination, time, tools, things like that. Um, and we're definitely open to suggestions on, on things that we could do to, to uh, further this work. And that's it. We're welcome to take questions. Uh, thanks uh, for that presentation found it very interesting. There are a few questions. Uh, we'll take them one by one. Uh, OK, here we go. How similar are the data models and ontologies of DHR and music brains? Example, roles in recording, et cetera. David, do you want to take that and just give a quick summary of the, the work that you did in having to uh, handle the concept of, of talent and introduce the concept of master talent that was equivalent to music brains artist. Um, can, can the question be repeated? I'm not sure that I, um, I was going to punt that to you, Sean, but. <laughs> well, <laughs> was, yeah. Oh. How similar are the data models or ontologies of the AHR and music brains? Uh, I'm not really sure, actually. Um, well, the, so in, um, in DAR, um, we, you started with the concept of a talent, which um, was really a name and a role. So you could say have, you know, five different talents records for, say, Bessie Smith. Uh, and then um, in order to connect to these other sources, including Music Brains, we needed to uh, introduce um, a, a concept of master talent that linked all of those roles together in the FileMaker database that could be the uh, equivalent to Music Brain's uh, record or to the Wikidata person. So that was something that was introduced through this project. Yeah, and, and, and that's a unique quality of DAR in that our data is much more granular than most other places. I can't think of another database that has different records for everybody's individual role in a creative work. Um, so that uh, I, th I think it's good. It makes DAR a, a more interesting resource, but it presented a real challenge for doing this because we had to uh, collapse those. 
okay uh, thank you and the other one is more like a comment spotify metadata i could imagine a project in which the library community could cooperate with spotify to improve metadata uh, followed by uh, what about youtube which is metadata poor in so these are the questions related to your uh, your presentation I think there's a lot of opportunities here. Um, and I think one of the reasons that LC gave us, Library of Congress gave us a little money was that it's it's a rather small and specialized resource that didn't require a huge amount of um, resources to, to implement something like this. Um, but I think this has opened up more possibilities of, of further collaboration and, and linkages to other resources. Yeah, thank you. The other question is, is there any link to the linked jazz project? There's not a direct link. Um, I don't know if you've used linked jazz, David, in um, other parts of the DAR project, but we did um, use uh, one of the tools from the linked jazz project for um, verifying matches as inspiration um, for the DAR um, tool in FileMaker. I don't know if you can know more about that, David. Thank you. And there's just one more uh, really nice reconciliation tool. Would it be reusable? The reconciliation tool, is it reusable? Um, are you talking about the, the harvesting or the FileMaker tool? I, I don't know. There's a question from Carol Melzak from France. Um, as far as like, the, the harvesting, we can share, we can share that. But David, do you have any thoughts on the, the reconciliation tool in FileMaker? Well, we can reuse it. Like if, if, if we were to crawl another database, like the Jazz um, database, we could reuse Michael's reconciliation tool. Um, but it's not, and we would certainly share, share it, but it's, it was built specifically for us, and it would be hard to, to share it with other projects that we would if somebody wanted to see how we modeled it or something like that. But we can reuse it if, if um, Sean does another Music Brains Harvest and we get another 5,000 matches, we can reuse it. One of our next, we want to crawl V off because we have not done that yet, uh, crawl it directly. Uh, we know there's a lot of matches there. I've done some preliminary work in Open Refine using their reconciliation tool. Uh, but again, it's going to require hand matching of Ver hand verification of, of, of matches. Mm 